Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks Geeks. In this problem today, uh, we are going to see how to implement two stacks in an array. So in this problem, we have to create a data structure, two stacks, that represents uh, two stacks within the uh, same data structure. The implementation uh, should actually use just one array. That is, both stacks should use the same array for storing the elements. And the requirement is that the following functions must be supported by uh, this data structure by two stacks. So the first is uh, push one and push two. So it pushes the value x, uh, which, which will be the argument to these functions, uh, to the first stack and the second step, uh, stack respectively. Then again, uh, you'll have the functions pop1 and pop2, which will uh, pop out an element from the first stack and second stack respectively. So uh, the first method uh, to solve this problem will be to divide the space into equal half. So what we do is uh, if we have an array of size n, then we reserve this uh, space from 0 to n by 2 for first stack and n by 2 plus 1 to n minus 1 for the second stack. Now, uh, the problem with this is that uh, it results in inefficient use of array space. Uh, why? Because a stack operation may result in stack overflow even if there is some space available in the array. Let's see why. So, uh, for example, uh, there is a, the a size of the array is 6 and we push three elements to stack 1. So, uh, now uh, we haven't pushed anything to stack 2. We just pushed three elements to stack 1. Now, if we try to push fourth element to stack one, there will be an overflow because uh, we have fixed the size of stack one as three elements. So it can accommodate at most three elements. Now, we, when we try to push a fourth element, it uh, says uh, overflow. But the thing is that because uh, we haven't inserted any element in stack two, so there is space for three more elements, but uh, still it will, uh, when we try to push the element for stack one, it says an overflow. So uh, this is basically inefficient use of the space. So then we have a method two. In method two, uh, we will be doing a efficient implementation, which will be uh, space efficient. So uh, we will be using the uh, all the available space and it will not cause an overflow if there is space available in array. So because we will not be fixing the space uh, for each of the array beforehand. So the idea is to start the two stacks from two extreme corners of array J from, from the array. So the stack one starts from the leftmost element and the first element of stack one is pushed at index zero. Whereas the stack two starts from the rightmost corner and the first element of stack two is pushed at the index n minus one. Now both stacks grow or shrink in opposite direction. So one is coming from the left and one is coming from the right. And to check the overflow, uh, we just have to check if there is space in between the top uh, value of both the elements, uh, both the arrays. So if there is space between the tops of the uh, both the stacks, then uh, there isn't uh, overflow, and we can we still have space. If there uh, if the elements uh, the top elements are uh, next to each other, that means it doesn't have any space in between. So it means that it will be an overflow. Okay, so uh, let's look at the implementation. So here we have our driver function where we uh, have this class two stacks. So we'll, we'll look at the implementation of the two stacks class uh, and we are creating an object TS and we are uh, initializing it with five. So this value will be going inside the constructor of two stacks class. Now we push, we do a push one five, then we do a push to 10, 15, push 1, 11, push 2, 7. So we'll be doing all these operation, push operations. Then we'll, uh, we'll be popping uh, one element from each. And yeah, in between we are also pushing 40 in stack two. So we must get uh, 40 from stack two and we must get 11 from stack one. Okay, so let's look at the implementation of two stacks class. So it has the actual array then the size, size of the array, and then we maintain the two uh, top elements, so top one and top two. Inside the constructor, we just pass the size of the array. So that is uh, set to the variable size, that n value, 
then uh, we allocate the space of uh, size n integers to the array so the integer uh, the this array has the space of n integers here then we initialize the top one to minus one and top two to the size because the last element will have the index size minus one so that's why we are initializing the top two value to be size and not size minus one okay so let's look at the uh, push one operation so push one is a method to push an element x to the stack one so uh, we'll we'll be checking this condition that top one if top one is smaller than uh, top two minus one so if uh, there is space uh, between uh, top one and top two then we do the push operation otherwise we say that it is stack overflow and we exit so if there is space between the uh, tops of both the stacks then we do a top one plus plus and then we put the element x at the top one position similarly for the uh, push to that is pushing to the secondary uh, we again have the same condition to check if there is space in the uh, stack otherwise we print stack overflow and now in the uh, push one operation we were doing top one plus plus here we will be uh, we will be doing top two minus minus because we are starting from the rightmost uh, part of the array and then we place the element x at the top two okay so now uh, let's look at the uh, pop one here so in the pop one uh, we'll be checking if top one is greater than equal to zero so if that is the case then uh, it still has the elements otherwise uh, there is stack underflow so if it has the element we uh, get the element inside a variable x uh, we do a top one minus minus and then when and then we return the variable x that is the popped element similarly for the pop two uh, here we have the condition uh, top two is smaller than size so if top two is smaller than size that means that it has the element so otherwise we print stack underflow uh, okay so if ha it has the element then again we get the element inside x then we do a top two plus plus and then we return the popped element that is x now uh, in this implementation we are doing uh, all the four operations in order of one time complexity uh, which is uh, pretty good so uh, that is all for this tutorial you can visit this link to uh, see all the stuff which we discussed in this tutorial and also to run the code uh, in the web in the id itself on the geeks or geeks website Thank you very much.